Okay, so um, here's kind of the goal. We are doing area perimeter volume, or, or not volume, but area perimeter and circumference, I should say. That's what we're doing today. Um, so once you guys get logged into your lunch, um, you can close out your little Chrome browser. I know some of you are starting to log in here. Try to get your lunch figured out. Uh, but here's our kind of our first problem today. You're going to have a worksheet today. Um, that's kind of our goal. And um, this is kind of the type of problem you're going to see right in the beginning. So um, this is something I kind of waited for. Yesterday was kind of intro day, right? We did a couple examples of how to find area and perimeter on a rectangle. Well, I made it a little more challenging today. So here's the idea. Let's say this is your problem. This is six centimeters. And this is 14 centimeters, and this is 3 centimeters, and this is 10 centimeters. Okay, not drawn to scale, but you get the idea. These are going to be your first four in the homework today. Um, the question that will ask, it will say find the perimeter and find the area of this object. Well, it's yeah. Do you agree that they're all supposed to be rectangles? You are my horrible artistic talent. And they're supposed to be rectangles. So you can do this a couple different ways. Maybe you're that person that sees it like this. Divide it. Yeah, divide it like that. Maybe that's the way you see it. Or maybe you see it where you go up instead. I don't know. It's kind of whatever you see it as. Okay, I, I don't really mind. But what we need to figure out is kind of what are the numbers that are needed. Now, I'm going to take a majority vote here. Do you guys mostly see it like that or the other way? The other way? Okay. All, right. All right, let's go the other way. So that's the way I saw it too. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter, but that's the way I see it too. You break the top half. Okay, the top, the the perimeter of just the top part here, um, that's 10, this is 14, this is 3. What would this distance need to be? 14 minus 6. Exactly. It's the whole length of the wall here, It's whole, this whole length is 14, and what you do is you take away 6, and so this is your eight centimeters, okay? That's that wall right there. And then the same thing over here, for this stick right here, this piece, it's the 10 and you take away three, because this should be all of 10, this should be all of 10. And if you take away this little three here, this would be seven centimeters. Does that make sense how you're like finding all the numbers? You're just subtracting, just kind of making a logical conclusion. So um, perimeter should be easy. So step one, finding perimeter, you add up all the walls. So I'm going to add up the 10. I'm going to start at the top and kind of work my way around clockwise. Uh, so 10, 14, the 3, the 8, the 7, and the 6. That's, those are the numbers I'm adding up. Okay? Um, and the label on that, whatever that turns out to be, it's going to be in centimeters. That's how you do perimeter. Does that make sense how you do perimeter? You add up the walls. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, why did I do all the other fancy stuff? It's because... Now the second question is to find area. Area is more challenging because area you have to go off of the square footage, right? The inside. How many boxes are in here? So when you do area for a rectangle specifically, it's length and width. So you have to figure out the box dimensions so you can figure out length and width. I'm going to do this box down here first, just this one. The length and width of that box. Three and eight. Three and eight. It's the the width is there. There's the length or vice versa, maybe this is your width and that's your length. I don't know how you want to look at it. But yeah, so when you multiply these two together, to find area, so I'm gonna, I'll separate these. So this, that longer piece down here, this is eight and three. You're absolutely right. This is gonna turn out to be 24 because you multiply the two together and the label would be centimeters squared or square centimeters. Area is always in squares, right? The little boxes. So your first area, that little blue piece is 24 centimeters squared. Again, that was the eight times three. Does that make sense, that first part? Then the other piece, I'll put this one in maybe red, this piece up here, the mention of that thing is six by 10. Six. Yeah, and so, because the six is the width, the 10 is the length, or however you want to think of it, but base and height, however you want to say it, but this whole box is six by 10, you're absolutely right. When you multiply those together, so the six by 10, you're getting 60, and that would also be centimeters squared. So that would be in that little area. That's the six times 10, which is 60 centimeters squared. And then I would add those together and get 84. Yeah, that would be your total area. You just add the two boxes together. Does that make sense what you're gonna do on those first few? 
I'm not joking, they're gonna be that straightforward. It just, it's one of those things, I think I'm gonna just pick a primer just to put a box. That's more elementary based. I'm gonna kind of pick it so it's more realistic, right? This is the type of setup that you probably have to do in a home, right? You have to get rid of walls, you have to deal with a closet or a bathroom, and you're trying to figure out the area on the floor. Well, it's not gonna be just a perfect box every time. There's gonna be walls in the way, and you have to kind of separate things out and remeasure. So I thought that was kind of a more practical based problem that would, what we'd use it for. Uh, again, area, it's used for carpet or hardwood floors, right? It's how much space you need. That's how they sell carpets, by how many square yards or feet that you're using or meters. And then the perimeter, you know, the outside of the walls, uh, that would be, you know, trim. So in this room, it's the little splash board on the bottom. Maybe you have crown molding or floor molding, really nice like wood trim on the bottom of your, your room. That would be perimeter. That's the whole point of perimeter. Okay. All right. Questions with the first one. Kind of very, very different than yesterday. That was more practical. I won the least. Let me see one of those. Okay. The next ones are very, very straightforward. I don't pick weird, goofy things. I picked, you know, just a triangle. I picked one, a couple that look like that, some that look like just a right triangle. Uh, my goal today, because I promise you, they say, I want to do one of those. You know, give me a problem that has those numbers in it. I'll let you guys just kind of make up some digits for me. Um, and then. Uh, and then we'll do a circle problem. Bless you. Okay. All right. Do we are we comfortable in the first one now? Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's go to the next one. Right. My goal is just do three problems, and I'm done. And then you guys can work all you want, and the homework will be due this later this week. I think Thursday. I'm going to make it due this week. So you get a couple days to kind of work on it in class, ask questions if you need to. Uh, but let's do a triangle one. Let's do one that looks like that thing. Okay. So it's a triangle. It's got this little height going down through the middle, that's height. Um, I think the, the worksheet that I created for you, they'll mark height out here. They'll say height is equal to, they'll just mark it outside the triangle so it's not too confusing. Um, you guys get to pick a height. What height do you want to use? 10. 10? Okay, let's do 10. Let's go with like 10 inches. Okay. All right, so that's 10 inches. Um, the bottom of this thing, let's say this, this uh, base down here, let's say this is 16 inches. Say that's the bottom. And let's say this side over here is 12 inches. And let's say this side over here is, know, let's, let's go 12 again, let's go 12 inches. Let's make it a like an isosceles turn. Okay, now. How do we find perimeter? What do we need to do? 16 plus 12 plus 12. Yeah. You just add up the walls of the triangle. You're absolutely right. The 16, the 12, and the 12. That's perimeter. You don't use height. It's just the outside walls. Height's the inside. If you want to label the inside the 10 inches, that's fine. Some people don't like this 10 on the outside. It's the same thing. But when you find perimeter, you're adding up the outside. Inches plus. Uh, oop, what did I do 10 for him? 16, 16 plus the 12 plus the 12. Okay. And what is that? 30, 40? 40, 40 inches in total. And then I'll. Alright, now, um, that's perimeter, pretty easy, just add up the outside walls. Now, to find area, now to find area, you have to use the height and base. The base on this one is the 16, the height is the 10. That's how tall it is. You multiply those two together, and then you cut that answer in half. That's how you find it. That's how you find area. It's base times the height, cut in half. Now, how I know those are the base and height? The base and height have to be at a 90 degree angle from each other. So that's, you're looking for the two walls that touch the 90. So in my case, that's the 10 and the 16. Those are the two walls that touch the 90. Maybe you just have a right triangle like what we did yesterday, like this. Well, then your base is here and your height's there, you know, whatever, vice versa. Right, it's the two that touch the 90. So, all right, so you multiply those, that's 160, and we cut that in half. Half 160 is 80, and this would be what, inches squared, or square inches, it's a little square you could fit in there. Again, area is always in squares. Normal, like perimeter circumference is always in normal digits, you know, labels, inches, feet, yards. Questions on triangles. I didn't pick any goofy ones where I had, you know, boxes and other things and things missing out of the middle. I just kind of picked a really straightforward one. Um, 
you know, a triangle type of garden, or maybe you're going to figure out the area in the corner of your room that you're going to set up a stand or something. So, all right, last one, circle. And I'll let you guys have option. Do you guys want to have a diameter or radius? Radius. Radius, radius. okay. So this one, they're going to give you a radius. If they give you a diameter, you just cut that number in half. Uh, any number you want. You can have a decimal, you can have a whole number. What do you want? Decimal? 7.2. 7 7.2, I heard. Okay, sorry. She's quick on the draw. 7.2, is that what you said? 7.2. Now, I'll let you pick a label, though. Meters. Meters, okay. All right. So you have to pick the number. Meters. Is that the number you want? Okay. All right. So this is my radius. Now, if it was a diameter, I'd have to cut this in half and get a really even goofier number. But for me, um, I'm going to use this number. This is my radius. It's from the center to the outside. To find the circumference on this one, and it'll actually say on the worksheet, find circumference. You have to take 2 times pi times r. It doesn't matter the order you go. So you can rearrange. If you want to take diameter times pi, because again, that's what we talked about yesterday, you can rearrange these and just take the diameter times pi, because that's two of the radiuses, you can do that. Uh, but I want the exact number, okay? So for mine, it's 7.2 times the two, and then we're gonna take it times pi. And so this ends up being 14.4 pi's. And that's in what, meters? I wanna see this answer. That's the exact answer. That's exact. You just leave pi like it's a variable. Then I also want you to type in your calculator because I want the decimal of it as well. That's what we practiced yesterday. So on my calculator, so the pi button's right there. So I type in 14.4, hit times pi, the little pi button. If you don't have a pi button, because I know some people don't have that fancy of a calculator, so I had some people just using a simple calculator yesterday, just type in like the first four decimal places, you know, 3.14159, and then just multiply it. What are we getting here when you multiply this? Four. 45.2389 Okay, yeah. And four or five decimal places. That's how accurate I want you to be. I should have probably put that on the I did. I'll just tell everybody. Four to five decimal places. Do we does that make sense? The 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 circumference. Again, circumference is they tread around. So that's like the distance around the tire. Or a basketball or a volleyball or whatever you're dealing with. It's the, it's the actual tread, the, the distance along the outside of the object. That's circumference. Now, area would be the number of tiles on the inside. Well, area, uh, area for, uh, for a circle is pi r squared, or that's pi times r times r. So we, we multiply those. Well, if, uh, if I take pi times 14.4 times 14.4, it's, uh, it's going to be in the 196 range. Uh, it's 197.6. Say it again. Isn't it 7.2 for the radius? No. Oh, 7.2. Oh, geez. What am I doing? Oh, thank you. Oh. Almost made it. Colossal mistake. 7.2 and 7.2. Thank Number you. Number three, you're going to chop a little bit. Ooh, ooh that would really bad thing. I didn't even catch that. Uh, all right, so 7.2 and 7.2, <coughs> we multiply that. Uh, 7 times 7 is 49. Uh, I don't know, what are we looking at? Around 49-ish range? 51.84. Okay. All right, so 51.84 pi. pi. And that's in meters squared. Square meters. That's the exact answer, right? Even though we took 7.2 times 7.2. But the decimal of it, we have to multiply 51.84 times pi. What decimal do we get? Say it again. 162.8601. 8601 meters squared. Four to five decimal places. Is that what everyone's getting? Okay, same numbers. Okay. All right. Is there questions on any of the problems I've kind of come up with so far? Anything in particular that you're you're going to be nervous about trying? And you'd like to see another one. Don't be afraid. Like this is the time. Like, yeah, I didn't quite get how you did that. I don't know how to type in the calculator. I can show you that on yours because maybe your calculator is different than mine. Because I can already see one. Like, I don't know how to use one. I don't have to it for a while. Okay, I'm gonna hand out some worksheets. Uh, it's front and back. It's due on Thursday. So, it's like ten problems total. Yeah. I was crazy.
printing. Didn't anyone hear a printer go? Am I just that crazy? I swear I heard the printer print. Uh, maybe you didn't. It'll come out here in about a minute. All right. Apologies.